Hello, I'm Dr. Reed Schufer, and I've created this presentation to help you understand the PenHIP system of screening for canine hip dysplasia and how to interpret the results of the PenHIP reports. Hip dysplasia affects many breeds of dogs and can lead to debilitating arthritis in our pets. Hip dysplasia is a malformation of the hip joint, which is a ball and socket joint consisting of the head of the femur, the ball, and the acetabulum, the socket. In the normal hip, the femoral head sits tightly in the socket of the acetabulum, which allows the joint to rotate smoothly. Here is a radiograph showing what normal hips look like using x-rays. Notice how the head of the femur fits snugly in the acetabulum. Dysplastic hips are malformed and the femoral head is lo relatively loose in the joint. The acetabulum may be shallow and or the femoral head may be misshapen, which prevents the joint from operating smoothly. Over time, <clears throat> the excessive movement of the femoral head in the joint stretches the joint capsule, causing inflammation, which ultimately leads to osteoarthritis. In the image to the right, you can see the artist's depiction of the irregular shape of the joint and the angry looking bone that results from the arthritis. Here is a radiograph of a dysplastic hip Notice how the femoral head is not seated well in the acetabulum. As veterinarians, we try to help owners determine if their pet is suffering from or is likely to suffer from hip dysplasia. This is important in helping owners select new pets as well as helping breeding, breeders select breeding stock. There are two major techniques utilized to diagnose hip dysplasia, pen hip and OFA or orthopedic foundation for animals. Let's compare the difference between PenHIP method versus the OFA method. First, PenHIP can accurately diagnose or predict canine hip dysplasia as early as 16 weeks of age. As the pet grows, there is little discrepancy from the original diagnosis. OFA will not certify a dog before 24 months of age. If we can detect hip dysplasia early on, there are a number of surgical procedures which may help spare the pet from the onset of arthritis later in life. So there is an advantage to early certification available with PenHIP. The PenHIP technique and results are reproducible and reliable. All veterinarians who can perform PenHIP testing must undergo rigorous training to ensure that the images they produce are accurate and consistent. OFA films require no advanced training by veterinarians. OFA films are interpreted on a subjective basis and the same films are not always graded similarly by different radiologists, and sometimes even the same radiologist may give a different opinion of the same radiograph viewed at a different time. Pen hip films are graded on a quantitative basis where the radiologist makes specific measurements on the radiograph. This leads to much higher consistency between radiologists. Pets rated good or excellent at two years of age of, by OFA testing may go on to develop arthritis as early as five years despite their good scores at two years. Pets with good ratings on pen hip testing have much lower chance of developing arthritis later in life. One goal of testing for hip dysplasia is to try and improve the status of the hips in any breed through a selective breeding program. The idea being that if we breed dogs with the best hips, their offspring should have better hips and if we continue to breed the better dogs to each other, the incidence of dysplasia should reduce in the breed. In over 40 years of using OFA testing and breeding based on the results, the incidence of dysplasia has not improved in most breeds. When using the pen, syst pen hip system to breed, it has been shown in laboratories that dysplasia can be eliminated from a breeding colony in as little as eight generations. By now you can see why we prefer the PenHIP system over the OFA system. Let's move on to the PenHIP methodology. When you bring your pet in for PenHIP evaluation, we will give your pet a thorough physical exam and test the hips for overt signs of laxity and or pain. Next, your pet will be safely sedated or anesthetized so that they can be positioned properly for the radiographs. A series of three different views of the hips are taken and submitted by electronic transmission for evaluation at PenHIP. The results are usually back to us within four to six working days. The first view taken is the leg extended view, which is the same view that is submitted for an OFA evaluation. 
This view allows the radiologist to get an overall view of the hip joint and evaluate it for gross abnormalities and signs of arthritis. The second view is called the compression view. In this view, the radiologist can evaluate how well the femoral head fits in the acetabulum. The third view is called the distractive view. It is obtained by placing a distractor device between the legs of the dog. The legs are gently compressed against the distractor, which pulls the femoral head out of the acetabulum gently. Evaluating this view allows us to tell just how loose or tight the hip is. Here is an example of the distracted view. If you look closely, you can see the outline of the distractor, which is made of plastic, as outlined by the arrows on this slide. Using the distracted view, the penhip radiologist can make a precise measurement to determine how far the femoral head distracts from the acetabulum. The number they come up with is called the distractive index, or the DI. Smaller DI values mean tighter hips, while larger DI values mean looser hips. An easy way to understand the DI is that if the femoral head is distracted all the way out of the acetabulum, or 100%, then the DI will equal 1.0. If the femoral head moves 50% out of the joint, then the DI value equals 0.5. Using this logic, it is easy to see how lower numbers mean the femoral head didn't move as far as it did with pets that have a higher DI value. The higher the DI value, the more likely we are to develop hip dysplasia. Values above 0.45 are more likely to develop hip dysplasia while values above 0.7 are highly likely to develop hip dysplasia. We can now move on to discuss how we interpret the PenHip results. There are generally two main reasons for PenHip testing. The first is to determine if a pet has hip dysplasia or how likely a pet is to develop hip dysplasia in the future. This can be important when you are considering purchasing a new pet and you want to make sure that he or she is as healthy as possible. The second reason for using PenHip testing is to help determine which animals should be used for breeding purposes. When you receive a PenHip report, it will contain a chart such as the one in this slide. The chart tells us the DI value that your pet received. Keep in mind that each hip is graded separately, but the DI score that your pet is given is based on the highest or worst score that your pet receives. Your pet's DI value is charted relative to all pets in that breed, which have been tested. The chart will also tell you what the likelihood is that your pet will develop hip dysplasia. Let's examine this example more closely. This is an example of a Belgian Malinois who scored a DI value of 0.26, as you can see by the round dot on the chart to the right. The shaded area of the chart shows the range of scores that were found in all the dogs tested by Pen Hip in this breed. In this case, the best hip scored a 0.2 on the DI, and the worst scored a 0.56. The chart also shows you what the breed average is as denoted by the black square, which for this breed is 0.34. Notice that this chart is divided into four columns by vertical black lines. Each section reflects the likelihood that your pet will develop osteoarthritis from hip dysplasia. The divisions are rated from low to mild to moderate to high risk. In this case, you can see that this pet falls within the low risk column. Evaluating this particular pet, we see that first, she has a low risk of developing hip dysplasia. Second, she has hips that are better than the average for this breed. If you were looking to purchase this dog with the intent of breeding, you could be happy that she is better than the average and would be more likely to make puppies with better than average hips. More and more, breeders are starting to use pen hip to help improve their breeding programs. Since about 60% of hip dysplasia is caused by genetic factors passed down from the parents, it makes sense that we would want to select the pets with DI values better than the breed average to use in our breeding programs. Therefore, if your pet scores lower than the breed average in their DI score, they would be good breeding stock. Looking at the pet in this example, who has a DI of 0.26, which is lower than the breed average of 0.34, it's obvious that she would be a good addition to the breeding program. 
For breeders really wanting to improve their lines, the goal would be to find mating pairs whose DI values are as good as your own pet, but preferably better. For example, if you are breeding golden retrievers whose average DI value for the breed is 0.55, you would start with both dogs having DI values better than 0.55. Their offspring should have a high likelihood of making pups with DI values as good or better than the parent, although you can still end up with some pups with DI values worse than that parent. In the next generation, you would take the pup with the best DI value in this litter and find a mate from another litter whose DI value is as good as this dog or better. Their offspring should develop some pups with even better hips. If you continue breeding the best to the best, you can actually eliminate dysplasia in about eight generations, as has been shown in scientific studies on beagle colonies. I hope that this presentation has helped you to understand the pen hip system and how to use it to your benefit. The take home message is that pen hip testing is a safe and reliable method for detecting and predicting the presence of canine hip dysplasia. Pen hip test results can help you select a pet and help you decide if a particular dog should be included in your breeding program. Breeders who are serious about improving their breeds can use the pen hip test results to help them reduce and hopefully eliminate hip dysplasia in their lines. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me at 909-980-3575.